one healing touch, one touch from the Master. Hello, welcome to Healing Touch. I am your host, Dr. Gina Miller, and our lesson today is on the scene behind the scenes. That's the title of our lesson. God is in the scene behind the scenes. We're using as a backdrop for the lesson tonight, the book of Exodus chapter 14, beginning at verse 10, when the children of Israel were coming out of Egypt. Now, the scripture reads, And when Pharaoh drew nigh, the children of Israel lifted up their eyes, and behold, the Egyptians marched after them, and they were sore afraid, and the children of Israel cried out unto the Lord. And they said unto Moses, Because there were no graves in Egypt, hast thou taken us away to die in the wilderness? Wherefore hast thou dealt thus with us to carry us forth out of Egypt? Is not this the word that we did tell thee in Egypt, saying, Let us alone, that we may serve the Egyptians? For it had been better for us to serve the Egyptians than that we should die in the wilderness. Now that is the scene. The scene is that the children of Israel are basically at this point in time telling Moses, Leave us alone. Why did you bring us out here to die in the wilderness? We would rather be slaves. We'd rather be slaves in Egypt than to die in the wilderness. And they were losing faith in their leader, Moses, as Moses began to direct them and to lead them out of Egypt. And they ran into a little turbulence, so to speak. How many times have we been uh, maybe in, an, in uh, an airplane and you're on your way from New York to L.A.? or wherever you may have been going, and the uh, pilot ran into a little bit of turbulence, and you start to pray and, and, and ask God to please help direct this pilot and, and clear the, the airwaves and, and to have that turbulence to, to leave you because you were afraid. And although a lot of people who fly don't like to admit it, sometimes you do get afraid. Now. That's a modern day example, but what the Israelites were talking about here in the book of Exodus was nowhere near that small or minute as a fear of just being afraid as you're in the plane and you don't know if the pilot is going to be able to gain control or to get through the turbulence. But the turbulence that they're talking about is a, a lot more severe than we could imagine. They are basically saying, why not let us just stay in Egypt and be slaves? Now, if you hear a person or any group of people decide um, to say, we'd rather be slaves and to serve um, this hard taskmaster than to be in the wilderness to uh, walk out of, of this uh, bondage into freedom, then you know they must have been very afraid. And so that scene is the scene in Exodus chapter uh, 14 that I want you to, to look at. But then let's go down to Exodus chapter 14 in verse 30. Uh, actually, let's look, look at verse 29. But the children of Israel walked upon dry land in the midst of the sea. And the waters were a wall unto them on their right hand and on their left. <laughs> That's behind the scenes. You see, God was working it out for them. Even though they couldn't see it at the moment, God was in control and is con in control of every aspect of their life. Even now, beloved, God is in control of every aspect of your life. And whatever it is that you might be going through right now, the wilderness experience that you might be walking through right now, know that you are not alone, that God is in the scene, behind the scene. And then let's look at verse 30. Thus the Lord saved Israel that day out of the hand of the Egyptians, and Israel saw the Egyptians dead upon the seashore. That was what was happening behind the scene. And then even though they couldn't see it at the time, 
you have to see it before it happened. You have to believe that God is in control of the situation. Before you see the conclusion of the matter, you must see it first in your heart, in your spirit, in your mind. You must believe that God has your back. And if you believe that, beloved, then there is no need to fear. Perfect love casts out all fear. And God perfectly loves you. And he perfectly loves me. Amen. In verse 31, And Israel saw that great work which the Lord did upon the Egyptians. And the people feared the Lord and believed the Lord and his servant Moses. Now you see the, the contrast here. Now in verse 10, the people were afraid and they were in fear of the Egyptians. And when Pharaoh drew nigh, the children of Israel lifted up their eyes and behold, the Egyptians marched after them and they were so afraid. So in verse 10, they were afraid of the Egyptians. But when you come down to verse 31, we see the deliverance of the Lord. We see how God delivered the Israelites. And Israel saw that great work which the Lord did upon the Egyptians. And the people feared the Lord and believed the Lord and his servant Moses. They respected the Lord. They feared God with a awesome fear. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, the Bible says to us in Proverbs. So when they at first saw the scene, they saw the scene of themselves being um, uh, followed by the Egyptians and the Egyptians were coming after them and the Egyptians were marching after them and, and uh, Pharaoh was getting close. They were afraid. That was the scene that they saw with their eyes. But your spiritual eye must begin to see the God that is in control of your situation behind the scene that you see with your eyes. Now, this is what they saw with their eyes, but in the spirit, they had to believe God for deliverance in order to see the end and the conclusion of the matter, which was that the Lord saved Israel that day out of the hand of the Egyptians. And Israel saw the Egyptians, they were dead upon the seashore and that's what you have to see and believe in your situation beloved even on tonight i want you to just think about the scene that you see in your eyes the scene that you are looking at in your situation in your life right now and look at it boldly open up your eyes square your shoulders and put your head back and look it dead in the eye and when you look at it you need to look at it with not only your natural eye, but look at it with the spiritual eye. Look at it with the eye of the Lord. Look at it with faith, believing that God is in control and that God is not like man, that he should not. He said he would never leave you and he will never forsake you. He will not leave you, beloved. He will not leave you. He hasn't left me. Hallelujah. He hasn't left you. So just stand on the promises of God. Amen. Believe that God is in control of that situation that you're in right now, whatever it is. We want to also look at another point of scripture that is a beautiful story in the book of 2 Kings. Amen. In the book of 2 Kings, when Elisha, he uh, had to, to pray and ask God, why don't you show him, show Elijah what uh, force was behind them in the situation that they were in so that he could not uh, hold on to the fear of the adversary and fear of the situation but that he would recognize and respect the fear of the Lord, which is the beginning of wisdom, and know that God was in control, that God was in the scene, behind the scene. Amen. So let's go to 2 Kings chapter 6 and verse 17. This is a beautiful story. It's like the, um, the story of David and Goliath when I underdog and, you know, how God, you know, stands up and shows himself strong. Amen. 
in your situation. That's the way I see this story in 2 Kings and also uh, David and Goliath. But let's look at uh, 2 Kings chapter 6, verse 17. And Elijah pray, Elisha prayed and said, Lord, I pray thee, open his eyes that he may see. And the Lord opened the eyes of the young man, and he saw, and behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire round about Elisha. Amen. Now, what prompted that prayer? What prompted Elisha to pray that prayer? Here is the story. Now, this is during the Ninth Syrian War. Amen. And that Elisha prayed to open the eyes of his servant. And he said, go and spy where he is, that I may send and fetch him. And it was told him, saying, behold, he is in Dothan. This is Second Kings chapter 6, verse 13. And then 14, therefore sent he thither horses and chariots and a great host, and they came by night and compassed the city about. And when the servant of the man of God was risen early and gone forth, Behold, a host compassed the city, both with horses and chariots. And his servants said unto him, Alas, my master, how shall we do? What's going to happen? How are we going to, you know, come out of this situation is what the servant is saying. So this is the servant of Elisha. Um, I, um, if I said um, it was um, Elijah earlier, then I will correct that right now. It was the servant, amen, of Elisha. So verse 15, and when the servant of the man of God was risen early and gone forth, behold, a host compassed the city, both with horses and chariots. And his servant said unto him, alas, my master, how shall we do? And he answered, fear not, for they that be with us are more than they that be with them. Now, Elisha told the servant, don't be afraid because the, the, those that are with us are more than those that are with our adversary. You see all their horses and their chariots and their um, soldiers, but don't be afraid because those that are with us are more than them. We have more than they have. But the servant couldn't see that, so Elisha had to pray and ask God, to open up his eyes that he may see. Again, the scene behind the scene. Elisha prayed to God that God would open up the servant's eyes so he could see what he could not see in the natural, that he could see it in the spiritual realm. Amen? And so when the Lord, when Elisha prayed and said, Lord, I pray thee open his eyes that he may see, then the Lord did answer his prayer and open the eyes of the young man. And he saw, and behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire round about Elisha. Amen. And when they came down to him, Elisha prayed unto the Lord and said, Smite this people, I pray thee, with blindness. And he smote them with blindness, according to the word of Elisha. So Elisha prayed and, then, and prayed to God that God would, would smote the, um, that he would put blindness on the adversary that was coming toward him and God answered his prayer and did just that and Elisha said unto them this is not the way neither is this the city follow me and I will bring you to the man whom you seek but he led them to Samaria amen so that's the scene behind the scenes in even second Kings chapter 6 and um, when Elisha prayed that God would open up the eyes of his servant, just as in the book of Exodus and the children of Israel were going across the, um, the um, water, uh, the sea, and when Pharaoh drew nigh to the children of Israel, lifted up their eyes, and behold, the Egyptians marched right after them. So they saw that scene, but Moses was secure in the fact that he knew that God was going to deliver them. So behind the scenes of what they saw with their eyes was the end result of what actually was happening in the spirit realm, which was that the Lord saved Israel. 
If you are looking to be saved and delivered from whatever situation that you might be in, you cannot focus your attention on what you see in the natural and expect that your, your heart will be uh, settled in that circumstance. Because if you're constantly looking at what you fear in the natural, there's no way that you can have uh, room for the light and the faith of God to manifest in the reality of your situation because you are so busy focusing on the problem. If you have a problem, if you have a problem in, in, a, in a, a, a math problem in school, you have to look for the answer or the solution to the problem. But if you keep focusing on the actual problem, you will be tossed, turning around and around and not follow the formula in that equation in order to get to the answer because you are so bogged down with the problem. So it's the same scenario and the same rule that applies even in life, in this situation that you might be facing right now. Don't put your eyes, don't fix your eyes, don't lock your eyes on the problem. You have to look to the hills from whence cometh your help. That's what the word of God tells us. But what it simply means is you got to look at Jesus. Call on the name of the Lord. Spend a little time talking to him and asking him how you should move forward or backwards or should you go to the left or go to the right, wherever you should go. But even if he tells you to stay put, know, beloved, that God is in control in whatever circumstance that you're in. You must seek him and know that he has your best interest at heart. He has your back. Amen. God has your back in every circumstance. So we looked at 2 Kings. Now I want to um, look at Psalms 18, 29, and 30. And this is another one of my favorites. I have, I don't know, every one that I say is my favorite, right? You say, well, the whole Bible is your favorite. Well, <laughs> maybe that is true. But I, every time I read something that speaks to me, it becomes my favorite, right? So let's just say it's my favorite right now. Amen. So Psalm 18, verse 29, the Bible says, For by thee I have run through a troop, and by my God have I leaped over a wall. As for God, his way is perfect. The word of the Lord is tried. He is a buckler to all those that trust in him. For who is God save the Lord? Or who is a rock save our God? God is our rock. Amen. By thee I have run through a troop, and by my God have I leaped over a wall. Every circumstance in my life, every problem, every every um, situation that I have found myself to be in where it was just insurmountable, uh, it was inconceivable in my mind's eye that it would ever, ever be solved, was only solved when I began to look at the Lord. When I began to look unto the hills from whence cometh my help, and I found and believed the word of God that was preached to me, that my help comes from the Lord. And beloved, that's why I'm here tonight, because I want you to know the same thing, that your help comes from the Lord, that God is fighting for you, and that he is looking at you as the beloved in him, that because God said, for he loved the world so much that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believed on him would not perish and but have everlasting life. That's John 3, 16. Because that word is true, I need you to believe it. Just know that God is fighting for you. He said that all souls belong to him. That means that he wants to give everyone an opportunity and everyone will have an opportunity to accept the Lord Jesus Christ for their savior. That no matter what you might be doing right now, I don't care if you're sitting somewhere that um, you, you're in a place right now spiritually where you don't even believe that God is God. 
Don't you know that God is still loving you, even though you might be in that state spiritually in your mind, you believe that there is no God. But even now in that state that you think you're in right now, God still loves you because he has you hearing his word. He has you being spoken to either, either by a song or even by this broadcast, but he is running after you, chasing after you. He is running after you. He is looking for you, beloved, because he wants you to be saved. Amen. Just as the children of Israel has that testimony that the Lord saved Israel that day out of the hand of the Egyptians and Israel saw the Egyptians dead upon the seashore. God wants to save you, beloved. God wants to save you right now out of the hand of the enemy. He wants to snatch you out of the hand of the enemy. And that's why he is putting this word before you even tonight. So whatever your problem is, whatever the situation is that you think is insurmountable and that there is no hope, don't believe the hype. Okay, the enemy wants you to see the problem. He wants you to get so fr afraid and frustrated and, and throw in the towel and not believe that God loves you. He is a liar. He is a liar from the beginning. But God is a good God. Believe it. God loves you. And anytime you doubt it, go to John 3, 16, and the word will tell you, God so loved the world. And where you put the world, where the word world is, you can put your name. For God so loved Jessica. For God so loved John. For God so loved Tom. Whatever your name is. For God so loved Gina that he gave his only begotten son. That is the word of God. Pure and simple. So don't believe that God doesn't love you. Don't believe that God is angry with you or that he's mad with you and that he would never, ever save you. If anyone is telling you that your problem is so big and so huge and the circumstance that you're in is so horrible that there is no hope for you, then you need to turn around and walk away expressly from that person. But turn to the word of God. Look to the hills. If you have a Bible, read your word. If you don't have a, a, a hard copy Bible, if you have a um, phone, a cell phone, go on to your cell phone and you can um, Google uh, the, the Bible on your cell phone and read the word. In this day and age of um, technology that we're in today, there's um, so many different ways that you can find the scriptures and that you can find the word of God and study to show yourself that you would uh, be um, a person that is seeking after the word of God. You know, I mean, <laughs> it, it, you know, I think about it and how um, when the Lord began to tug at my heart um, just through um different things and circumstances that was going on in my life and I began to talk to different ones I can't even really remember uh, who specifically might have been the one that you know really you know hit the mark it may have been a, a combination of several different people and things in my life because I came up um, as a young girl going to church going you know to the house of God and and hearing the word of God and I knew the truth, but I strayed away from that truth and started to live my life as somebody who did not know God. But God had to speak to my heart and call me back to Himself, you know, through different circumstances and situations, as I said, which is why I started out this lesson talking about the circumstances and the situation, the scene. That was going on with the children of Israel where they were afraid of the Egyptians. But Moses had to show them that God was in control. So I need you, beloved, to see the circumstance and situation that you might be in. That um, 
you think is insurmountable, I need you to see that scene, but not just end it at the scene. I need you to see the scene behind the scene. You need to look at Jesus, look at God who is behind that situation and he is working it out for you. You might even be in a situation where everything is fine and dandy, hunky-dory, and you don't need anything from anyone, so you think. But even that is a bad situation whenever you think that you are in a, a state of being that you don't need God, that is a bad place to be in. So just know that God is even in that scene and working behind the scenes because he is trying to tug at your heart. He is tugging at your heart and getting your attention even now while you hear this word that you know that God is not going to stop running after you. He is going to constantly be showing you himself, showing you his love through the word of God. And as I said before, go to your smartphone or uh, your iPhone, your computer, your desktop, and search out the scriptures if you don't have a physical Bible at your house. And really look up the scriptures and do a, a word search and, and, and look up love. Look up the love of God. Look up, you know, how um, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son to, that, that you would last in life and that you would not be condemned because he didn't send his son to the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. That because we accept and receive the free gift of salvation of the Lord Jesus Christ, we will be saved. That's the sole purpose and plan of God for your salvation. And the church, to the sanctuary, uh, visit with us, Third Street and White Plains Road. Uh, I would love to meet with you and to uh, talk to you, introduce you to our pastor. Hear the word of God and make a choice for yourself uh, that you will say, what must I do to be saved? After hearing the word of God, that that will be your question. What must I do to be saved? Now, beloved, continue to be blessed and know that we are praying for you. And I want you to remember without a doubt that God is in the scene, behind the scene, and he's working it out for you. Remember chapter 14 of the book of Exodus, starting at verse 10. Remember also Psalm 18. Remember also uh, 2 Kings. Amen. Um, that you will uh, be blessed. You know, go back to those scriptures in 2 Kings chapter 6, verse 17. When Elisha prayed that the, the servant's eyes would be opened, that he would see that there were more people with them than those on the adversary sides, right? That, you know, look at all of the, the horses and chariots that God has sent to protect us. Don't be afraid. Don't look at the adversary. Don't be like the Israelites and look at Pharaoh and the Egyptians that marched behind them. But look at God and the plan that God has for your life. And then also in Psalm 18, 29 to 30, when um, David's writing, he says, For by thee I have run through a troop, and by my God have I leaped over a wall. So when it seems like there is nowhere out, no way to, nowhere to go and no way out, just understand that by God you will be able to leap over the wall of that circumstance that you might be going through, that it is not going to take you out. You might be down, but you're not out, beloved. Remember that God loves you and he cares for you. And he is working it out for your good. Amen. Thank you so much for watching Healing Touch. I pray that you were blessed and that you will continue to study the word of God in season and out of season. That you will just hunger for the word of God. Because as you hunger and thirst after righteousness, you will be filled. Amen. God loves you and he's concerned about you. God bless you. Stop will make your whole life.